The Holy Quran has declared the month of Ramadan to be a special opportunity for the believers to reinforce their bond with God. Several places in the Quran decreed the special significance of this month. Historically also, some major Islamic events took place in this month. Besides the fact that the Quran was first revealed to Prophet Muhammad during this month, many other events which have proved to be of great significance in Islamic history are connected with this month. One such event was the Battle of Badr, one of the most decisive battles in the history of Islam. This was the first battle that Prophet Muhammad fought with a handful of believers against an enemy vastly superior in numbers. A decisive victory was scored which proved to be a key turning point in Islamic history. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O ye who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, even as it was prescribed for those before you, that ye may ward off evil. You said this was the holy month, the <laughs> Ramadan, and I was just wondering, what is that? What is it? What do you do? But uh, Ramadan is the name of a month. Each month has a name, like January, February, and Ramadan is a name of the ninth month in the lunar, lunar calendar that uh, uh, we Muslims uh, adopt. During that month, uh, it is a crash course in uh, self-restraint and in submission to God and the dedication. Uh, what we do is that we fast from pre-dawn to sunset, an absolute kind of fast. No, no water, no drink, no um, uh, intimate uh, sexual relations with the spouses uh, during that period. And uh, also we are supposed to tame our uh, moods and control our angers and uh, be in command of our whims and the desires. And it is meant uh, really to prepare us to carry on this kind of attitude uh, throughout the year. So it is a kind of uh, a crash course, a training program, a repair shop, so to speak, uh, where you hope that your car will run smoothly uh, during the year to come. And uh, we fast because it has been ordained on us in the Quran that in Ramadan we should fast. Uh, after sunset, uh, uh, those uh, of us who really get the spirit will just eat moderately and uh, have an opportunity to pray during the night. It is a month uh, of socialization and recitation of the Quran. Uh, those of us who are uh, overweight, I don't know whether we have that kind or not. Don't look at they me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they compensate by eating a lot, which is not really the way it, uh, by feasting. It, it is not supposed to be this way. It is, we just break the fast, we go back to normal. Uh, life after sunset. The very idea is to avoid excesses. I'm sure uh, Dr. Grant may comment, uh, fasting has been ordained. The Quran itself says that fa fasting has been ordained on mankind even before, uh, say, the Muslims started to fast. So there is fasting in Judaism and Christianity also. But there's fasting in Christianity, but it's not done at any set time. It's done as God uh, speaks to us. Uh, uh, our Lord spoke of fasting. And we use it as a Christian discipline in um, fasting and prayer to make ourselves more aware of God and to seek His will. Uh, fasting has been a part of the um, Judeo-Christian tradition over, over the centuries. But as opposed to Islam, we don't set aside a certain time to fast, and we don't dictate who will fast. Uh, we fast as God would, uh, as we say in Christian, terminology is God would lay that upon our hearts to fast. But it is interesting that uh, I'm sure that uh, like Dr. Grant who are interested in studying religion at large, there is seldom any religion, uh, whether it is the Judeo-Christian Islamic uh, triad that we always talk about, or even other religions. Yes, fasting the, is a part. Fasting is a part. Right, Since yes. 
since man is known and the religion is known, in each religion there is one kind of fasting or another. We are here at the Wilshire Boulevard Temple talking to Rabbi Alfred Wolf on the subject of fasting. Rabbi Wolf, is fasting a part of Judaism? It certainly is. The holiest day of the Jewish faith, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is a day on which Jews are supposed to abstain from food from sundown on one day until complete nightfall on the next. In addition to that, there are a number of traditional fast days, most of them linked with the days on which the, uh, Israel this, uh, as a country, and especially Jerusalem and the temple, were destroyed first by the Babylonians and then by the Romans. In addition, uh, many pious Jews will voluntarily fast at least part of, uh, let's say, a Monday and a Thursday and another Monday uh, simply as an expression of, uh, of personal self-discipline. Uh, what does the fast entail? Could you elaborate? Fasting in Judaism is the complete abstention from all food and all drink. The um, only differences between various fasts is the length of time of the fasting. On the Day of Atonement, for instance, the fasting is supposed to be from sunset one day until complete darkness the next, which is about 25 hours. Um, on other fasts, it may just be from sunrise until sunset. But it is always either we eat or we don't eat, nothing in between. Uh, do Jews sometimes choose just to fast on their own as a, as a form of prayer? Yes, as I mentioned before, there are some Jews who voluntarily will abstain from food on, let's say, twice a week um, as the fulfillment of a vow, for instance. Um, so it, it goes never instead of prayer, always with prayer. How do you personally feel about fasting? Uh, I feel that it is a uh, very meaningful, symbolic expression of dedication to God on the one hand and also of feeling of fellowship with all human beings. While we may have completely different tastes in the food we eat, we all feel the same when we're hungry. Is fasting a part of Christianity? Uh, yes, it's very much a part of Christianity. It comes, of course, because Christianity grew out of a uh, Jewish ethos, and the concepts of fasting and abstinence were part of Jewish life. They were also taken as part of the Christian uh, life. Uh, for example, the uh, season of Lent, uh, the 40 days that precede Easter, probably the holiest time for Catholic Christians, and that is a particular time of both fast and abstinence. Abstinence would be from meat, and uh, the fasting would be, of course, as the quantity of food. Um, in more recent times, uh, fasting and abstinence may not be as um, legalistically required, uh, but it is still very much a part of, especially, of that Lenten journey. And its 40 days comes from the biblical incident of Jesus being in the desert for 40 days and then being tempted by the, des by the devil. What exactly does the fast entail? Could you elaborate? The fast would be on, say, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. That would mean that a person could take only one full meal a day. Uh, the other two meals could not equal that, and there would be no meat at any of the meals. Uh, of course, it is always the spirit of the, uh, the law as well. It wouldn't mean that you would go out then and eat a meal that's three times larger than you would normally uh, do. So all three meals would be relatively small, a small collation. Do Christians sometimes choose to fast on their own as a form of prayer? Uh, they would. Uh, you will oftentimes uh, find people uh, who even sometimes are involved in great causes and issues who out of their own background would choose to, to fast. Cesar Chavez, who was a Roman Catholic, uh, oftentimes chooses uh, fasting uh, as a way of uh, bringing to the attention of a larger world the, the plight of, say, farm workers. From the Christian perspective, is fasting considered mandatory? Uh, there are certain times during the Lenten season when fasting and abstinence are required. 
for example, all the Fridays of the Lenten season, that would be seven in number, are days in which Catholics uh, must not eat meat on the Fridays. Uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday also days of fasting in which they must not eat more than one full meal a day. Um, in, uh, even within my own memory, um, it used to be much more severely required. For example, literally uh, all the days of Lent were days of fast except for Sunday, which means that anyone who was over 21 years of age was required each day to eat only one full meal a day for the entire 40 days of Lent. So it was a very uh, arduous uh, Lenten journey. However, today the uh, church oftentimes asks people freely to observe that. The bishops in their pastoral on war and peace, which acquired such notoriety on the nuclear issue, ask Catholics to consider uh, abstaining from meat all the Fridays, even though only the Fridays of Lent were required as a way of focusing attention on this need for prayer and fasting to uh, answer the uh, issues of war and peace and nuclear realities that confront us today. Could you tell us about the Lenten season? When is it and what does it entail? The uh, Lenten season uh, always takes place um, according to the time of Easter. And Easter is a lunar feast that's changeable. It is the first Sunday after the first full moon of the spring equinox. So it always takes place in the spring. Forty days before um, Easter, the Lenten season begins. It begins on Ash Wednesday, the day on which uh, Roman Catholics and many other Christians receive the Christian mark of the cross on their forehead in the form of ashes, which are the ashes from the previous Palm Sunday. And Lent is a time, it's a journey of fast, abstinence, prayer, in almsgiving. It is an intense spiritual time, 40 days, and it really does come taken much from the 40 days that uh, Jesus was in the desert and fasting as described in the Gospels. From your personal perspective, what does fasting mean to you in a spiritual way? I think probably two major things. Uh, it reminds uh, the individual, myself and others, uh, that uh, we have a need to, uh, to control things in our life, that we cannot be um, uh, oppressed by material things. The need for food is real, but sometimes for all of us it becomes perhaps too all-consuming. And so by willingly setting aside, we're reminded of the spiritual realities of life. It also puts us into contact with those who uh, are impoverished, you know, who uh, starve, not because uh, they choose to, uh, and so it is a time of justice. It reminds us of what it is to feel that pain and that gnawing of hunger as well. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran a guidance for mankind and clear proofs of the guidance and the criterion of right and wrong and whosoever of you is present, let him fast the month. And whosoever of you is sick or on a journey, let him fast the same number of other days. Allah desireth for you ease. He desireth not hardship for you. And he desireth that ye should complete the period and that ye should magnify Allah for having guided you and that peradventure you may be thankful. While fasting may be practiced by many for health reasons, 
This is not the intention or purpose of the fast in Islam, although this may prove to be an additional benefit for some. Our guest today is Mrs. Nikat Khan, and she is a Muslim dietitian who will share with us some of the nutritional information for fasting. What are the benefits from fasting? Um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that in the Quran that uh, um, fasting has been prescribed for you. It's a prescription not only for your soul, uh, but uh, for your body. It cleanses your system and it, cl um, uh, and it gives your organs some rest. Um, it's, a, it's, it, uh, it's a very good, uh, it teaches you self-discipline, self-restraint with a proper, um, let's say, um, uh, caloric inta intake, uh, an obese person, for example, can lose weight. Um, he would cut down from three meals to two meals a day and uh, cut down hopefully on calories and would uh, lose some weight, which is a good opportunity for people who are overweight to do that. Uh, again, it can improve your blood pressure. If a person, let's say, with high blood pressure um, gets a little bit cautious and starts taking less salt, cuts down on his salt intake, um, for a person with high cholesterol, if he cuts down on his uh, on fatty foods and um, calories, he would uh, have improvement in his cholesterol levels. What is the the calorie intake that someone should have during fasting? I would say, roughly speaking, for an adult male in good health, um, he should be consuming anywhere from 25 to 30 calories per kilogram for maintenance. Now, each kilogram is 2.2 pounds. Uh, for a woman, it should be slightly less. For a moderately active person, it should be anywhere from 30 to 35 calories per kilogram. Uh, for a very active person, slightly higher than that, anywhere from 35 to 40 calories per kilogram. Um, your calorie, calorie requirements definitely change with um, pregnancy and lactation. So it, it uh, varies. If you make sure you have um, you consume well-balanced diet. Now, ADA, which is American Dietetic Association, recommends that 55 to 60 percent of your caloric in calories come from carbohydrates, uh, approximately 15 percent from protein, and less than 30 percent from fat. But uh, during the month of Ramadan, your protein intake should be slightly higher, especially at Sahur time in order to sustain you throughout the day because protein has that satiety va uh, value. Uh, whereas in complex carbohydrates, um, the body burns, burns up uh, complex carbohydrates more readily, so you feel more hungry. So I would say in the morning at Sahur time, your diet should be slightly higher in protein, let's say about maybe 20% uh, rather than 15%, and uh, slightly higher in fats also. and. Uh, uh, a latest finding about protein has been that it maintains your glucose le blood glucose levels throughout the day, so you don't feel the hunger pangs. And uh, <clears throat> when you open the um, fast at iftar time, it's good to have complex carbohydrates and have an, have an early iftar. What are some of the foods that would represent proteins, uh, simple carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates? Um, the a uh, protein group would um, consist of uh, mainly your meats, your red meats, your white meats. We encourage, of course, the white meats, the like chicken, the chicken, turkey, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, of course, your soy protein also for people who um, do not ingest meat um, for, uh, for uh, um, reasons of being vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, your nuts are high in protein, um, beans are very high in protein, eggs are a high protein group. Um, carbohydrates, um, simple carbohydrates would be your sugars, your fruits, your juices, your pops, sodas. Uh, complex carbohydrates would be your whole grains, your uh, whole grain cereals, your breads, your rice, pastas, and stuff like that. And uh, fats would not only be your cooking oil and your uh, margarines and butter, but also avocados and mm -hmm. olives and coconut are very, very high in fat. So, Where does the date fit in? Date is high in carbohydrates and protein. Mm. So that's very nutritional food. Yes, it's very nutritional food. What might an ideal suhoor and iftar be doing uh, for a warm climate? Pertaining to the hot weather, let's say um, you definitely need uh, more fluids, especially water at suhoor time. Um, um, in uh, cold weather, generally, your body burns up more calories. So in cold weather, you would be consuming, consuming more calories. In hot weather, you would really not be 
should not be consuming a, hot, a lot more calories. An ideal suhoor for a Los Angeles climate, let's say, would be um, slightly higher in protein again and slightly higher in fat, uh, again to hold you up throughout the day mm -hmm. because of the satiety. Um, you would have that feeling of fullness and uh, you could uh, have, um, uh, let's say, an egg if a person is not, does not have high cholesterol or you could have a meat. Uh, again, uh, we stay uh, away from frying, we encourage stir frying, we encourage boiling, baking, steaming. What about a colder climate, say New York? Okay, generally you would be consuming, you would, a body burns up more calories in cold climate. Um, um, again, uh, when you're fasting at sahur time, I would stress the fact that your diet should be slightly higher in protein and fat to hold you up through the day, to sustain you throughout the day. You will not feel hunger pangs because you will have that feeling of fullness and um, um, slightly higher than usual in fat um, intake too, again to hold you through throughout the day. And iftar, iftar I would Iftar is the the breaking of fast. In the evening. In the evening. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely recommend that um, you have a high complex carbohydrate diet at iftar time and stay away even though I know it is a norm among uh, Muslim, fa Muslim families to um, be a real um, um, big on frying in this month. Um, to stay away, even if you, let's say, are a big on frying, um, Consume the cal consume your food at the early part of the evening rather than having it at a later part of the evening and because then you will de be depositing fat and gaining weight. What about young people who are used to eating junk food? Should they stop eating junk food during Ramadan? I just want to stress the point that not all junk food is bad. Um, it is, of course, detrimental to your health if you eat only um, junk food and uh, uh, food that's empty calories. Um, I feel good habits should be taught right from the beginning and not only they should be stressed during Ramadan but they should be carried on later on in your ordinary normal daily, daily lives. Um, like I said, not all junk food is bad. Let's say for example uh, an American born Muslim who um, um, generally likes to eat um, hamburgers and hot um, hamburgers and cokes. Um, hamburger, if uh, it's combined with a milkshake rather than Coke, and if it's eaten with a little bit of salad, you're getting uh, proper uh, nutrients from all food groups. So it can be a very good meal. It can be a very um, um, balanced meal. Um, again, um, good eating habits should be stressed right from the beginning, and uh, uh, Ramadan should not be an excuse. What about the young people who may be doing physical exercise at school, say in PE? Uh, should they continue this during Ramadan? I feel um, strongly um, as a dietitian and uh, that a child should be exempted from physical exercise, especially if it's track, if it's running, um, um, any, any strenuous sport is going to take toll, toll uh, on uh, the child's body. The child's body fluids are going to be depleted. He is going to feel dehydrated. Um, he is going to probably also experience low blood sugar with uh, strenuous exercise. So um, I feel the child should be excused um, because of uh, um, religious significance, uh, you know, of fasting. Um, while the child is fasting, he should let his um, school um, faculty know that he is fasting and it is religious and he should be excused from uh, doing all kinds of physical um, sports during this month. Although fasting is required for every Muslim, there are situations where some are exempted. We have with us today Dr. Hassan Hatout, who is a Muslim physician, a gynecologist. Is fasting a must, irrespective of health conditions? No, because uh, fasting is a religious duty, but whoever is unable to fulfill that duty would be exempted from it. And uh, there are two types of excuses, uh, exemptions from fasting. Uh, those permanent excuses uh, for which people would give up their fasting but would give uh, money for the poor in lieu of it. But if the health condition is a temporary one and will be remedied later on, then they'll have to fast a day for a day after they regain their health again. 
permanent conditions are like permanent illnesses uh, when a person should not be away from food or a drink for a long time when they are so feeble or so old aged uh, to make fasting really a, a very tedious process for them uh, but some situations are temporary say like pregnancy like lactation like uh, an episode of illness uh, then you uh, like traveling uh, then you do away away you do without fasting but later on when you normalize uh, you do the fasting again you're a gynecologist for the women viewers in our audience what are the feminine considerations for fasting uh, the first one is that during the menstrual period a woman shall not fast and shall not say her prayers and if she is in Mecca, she will not do tawaf around the Kaaba. Uh, and this uh, will be fasted later on. Uh, you know that some women try and postpone the Ramadan period altogether so that they find it much easier to, to fast during Ramadan with the whole Ummah uh, rather than to, uh, to make for it later on. And so they, uh, they take the contraceptive pill, uh, starting from the period before the fasting, mm -hmm. and taking the pill a day, but don't stop when it is the 20 days, just go on taking the pill. And as long as you take it, you will not get the period and you can continue the Ramadan fasting. Uh, if there is a little breakthrough bleeding during this, you just double the dose, you take more, not less mm -hmm. of the pill. And this should support the lining of the uterus so that there will be no bleeding and they can do that. Also, pregnant women uh, should really consult their Muslim physicians uh, whether they should fast or not. They have the exemption, they have the excuse, but some of them uh, would rather fast. And before taking that decision, I think there should be a thorough consultation with a Muslim physician because to any non-Muslim physician, fasting is a foolhardy and it is nonsense and it is, uh, should not be done, etc. But someone who knows what fasting is all about and how Muslims feel about it and its place in Islam as one of the pillars of Islam, etc. Uh, also during lactation, because uh, fasting might affect the yield of milk and the little baby is not supposed to share in the fasting. What about persons on medication, particularly injections? Injections would not spoil the fasting because uh, typically we refrain from eating things by mouth orally through the alimentary tract but the injections are all right uh, unless of course you go and take a liter of saline and sugar solution in order to avoid feeling hungry and, and thirsty this is of course not allowed you cannot fool yourself on that but injections are okay other medications you have the option, if this can be reorganized so that uh, you make the night take the place of the day and uh, in relation to your meals and you take your medication through the night and the fast during the day, that would be all right. If it is something that cannot be uh, rescheduled and medication has to be taken during the day, then you have the excuse. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Ayyaman ma'adudat Faman kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin fa'iddatum min ayyamin ukhar Wa ala alladhina yutiqunahu fidyatun ta'amu misk for over a billion Muslims all over the world, Ramadan is the most important month of the year. To discuss this important month, we have with us Dr. Muzamil Sadiqi, the director of the Islamic Society of Orange County. Dr. Siddiqui, what is Ramadan? What does the word Ramadan mean? 
Well, Ramadan is the name of the month. Uh, this is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which is a lunar calendar. It starts by the sighting of the moon. So it is uh, just like January, February. It's the names in the solar calendar, in the, the, the calendar that is used commonly. The Islamic religious calendar has other names of the months, and the Ramadan is the name of the ninth month, which is also the month of fasting. For the non-Muslim or for the new Muslim, could you explain exactly uh, what, Ram what the month of Ramadan means and why we fast? We fast during the month of Ramadan because during this month, Prophet Muhammad received the first revelation of the Quran. So it is celebrated, it is honored by the fasting during this month. Prophet Muhammad, in one night during this month, he was in the cave of Hira outside the city of Mecca and there the angel Jibreel appeared to him and gave him the message of the Quran. The Quran itself says that this is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. So in order to remember that great event, that blessed event, when God in his great mercy sent the divine his message for the guidance of mankind and that came during this month, so the whole month is celebrated and there is a great joy, there is a great happiness and also there is fasting during this month. So fasting, uh, by the way, is not associated as it is in some other cultures and some other religions. Fasting is normally associated with some kind of a mourning, some kind of sadness. Mm -hmm. In Islam, it is associated with happiness, with so joy. Wh what Prophet is the pur purpose of fasting? What is the reason for the fast? Well, there are several reasons. And what goes on in the person's mind during the fast or what, what yes. should be going on? Prophet Muhammad himself was fasting when he received the revelation. Mm -hmm. So his uh, body and his mind, his spirit was ready to receive the divine message. And uh, in a sense, uh, sometime I, I rem I'm reminded of the word of Jesus, peace be upon him, who is also recognized as a prophet in Islam. And Jesus, peace be upon him, said that man does not live by bread alone. So uh, it is to remind oneself that one is not just the slave and the servant of food and drink, but there are other things also important. Uh, one has to remember that uh, fasting, the whole purpose of fasting is then one know how to discipline oneself. A lot of people are used to their habits of eating and drinking and smoking and other things. And if they are deprived of it for a minute, for any short time, mm -hmm. they get very panicky. They lose control over themselves. Fasting teaches self-control, self-discipline to a person. Also, on the other hand, we know that uh, there is a lot of hunger. Mm. There is a lot of deprivation in this world. We are fortunate enough here in America, we don't see that here, at least most of us, although there are some here too who are going through that, that pain, that difficulty. But mo most of the people in America, they are not. But the world is, this is not the case of the world. No. There are a lot of people who are very hungry and they don't get, they don't get uh, even one meal a day. Mm. And it is very important that people who have, they should realize that thing and have some kind of empathy with the people who are deprived by depriving themselves voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And by this way, they should be sympathetic towards them and help them and be charitable towards them. That's why Ramadan is also called the month of charity. The so month of, uh, of, of uh, thankfulness to mm -hmm. God for whatever he has given, mm -hmm. and of course the greatest of that is the gift of the Qur'an, mm -hmm. and also on the other hand, be charitable and considerate and kind towards, towards other people. And what, it, what this is bringing uh, out to me is that with the charity, with the empathy for others, uh, the self-discipline, the cleansing of the body, uh, you're actually putting yourself into a, in a state that you can uh, become closer to God. True. To receive God. And that's the whole purpose of this month of Ramadan. It's the whole, uh, the month of spiritual, uh, it, it is a refresher course, mm. spiritually speaking. Yes, so it's uh, very It refreshes spiritual. one's whole personality. Yes. And there is a great improvement of personality that takes place during this month of Ramadan. Well, for those who have never fasted, uh, does the Muslim not eat for a whole month? No. What are the hours of fasting? <laughs> they, will not, they will not survive to do that. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not that uh, one, should, one does not eat anything yes. during the whole month. 
Now, fasting is a disciplined fasting. And that's the, the uniqueness of Islamic fasting. That the, the fasting is start from dawn, which is about one hour and a half before sunrise. From that time, at that time people get up a little early before that, mm -hmm. have their morning meal, which is called pre-dawn meal. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they make their intention that they are fasting for this day. And they continue fasting, that means they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't chew gum, anything. There is a total abstention. And then it continues until sunset. At the time of sunset, one terminates one's fast or one completes one's fast. And there is a, there is iftar, that is the breaking of the fast, uh, which is taken. And then after that one can eat uh, normal, usual food, whatever they take. Some people uh, complete their fast by a sip of water, some other juice or uh, a date or something mm -hmm. like that. This is what they have. But uh, this is the way how this uh, practice is done for the whole month, which is either 29 days or 30 days according to the sighting of the moon. At the end of the fast every day, uh, is there sort of a mini celebration or? Uh... Uh, fasting and feasting in Islamic culture goes together. <laughs> fasting and feasting. <laughs> yes, uh, people fast and feast at the same time. Uh, every evening there is a, some kind of a feast. Uh, people invite their friends and there's a lot of invitation that go on. Fast, breaking of the fast together. Uh, Islamic centers in different uh, cities and areas here in the United States they have this uh, breaking of the fast together. Sometimes in some places people do it every day. In the evening, Muslims from different areas, they come together and bring their food. They have some kind of a potluck. Or sometimes the, the, there is a, some family donates the food or something like that. Or people come and uh, eat together and on Saturdays or some other time. So there is a great uh, festivity that goes on during this month. So and then also in the evening there is a night prayer, which is Taraweeh mm -hmm. prayer, yes. that people uh, should do after the night prayer. Uh, and they sp spend long time reading to the, uh, listening mm -hmm. to the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. And the whole Qur'an is recited mm -hmm. throughout this month, mm -hmm. every night one portion of it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, so this, in this whole month people listen to the whole of the Qur'an. And there are some explanation and uh, uh, reminders about the religious values, the religious principles of all those things. It go on. So one of the ways to really become more spiritual then is to go to the mosque and listen to the to the re Quran recited uh, every e every evening after fasting. Yes, the Rabih prayer, mm -hmm. which is uh, mm -hmm. the nightly prayer mm -hmm. that, that is to be done after the last prayer, which mm -hmm. is the Isha prayer. Mm -hmm. The prayer is very important, and uh, Muslims should should try to get to, to the mosque to, to go to the mosque mm -hmm. and, and attend this prayer. So it's a time. It of takes about one hour. About but it is, uh, it is for this month, mm -hmm. this is a special prayer of this yes. month. So it's a uh, time of, of fasting and feasting and prayer and celebration and if you're planning on losing weight during this month you might be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it's not, uh, I mean, of course it's, it's very, it's very helpful for, from the health point of view too. And many of us who fast, we feel that. It cleanses the body. Yes, right? certainly. In the beginning, maybe first day, second day, first two, three days, a little difficult because we are changing the whole routine. But then after that, you acquire Ramadan routine. And then when the Ramadan is over, after the month you feel uh, much more uh, fresh, light, and happy that you have done that. It's becoming traditional in uh, traditionally Islamic uh, uh, media to call hordes of doctors to preach on the bodily benefits of fasting and the cure of various illnesses, etc., etc. I don't believe in all that. I don't think if it were to me as a doctor, I wouldn't have prescribed fasting the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would have allowed myself water. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyhow, we, we fast because this is the way it has been prescribed. It is, again, a sign of obedience to God. If any person tried to convince me to fast the way I fast now, I would have never accepted it. Mm -hmm. But when the other party is God's, my attitude is I hear and I obey. And when you, you realize that the core of humanity is really freedom, um, 
since we are accountable, it means that we are free to choose. What about uh, the psychological ramifications of, of the fast? How does it uplift the per person spiritually? How does the person get closer to God during this fast? You, you, you find yourself doing without the needs of your body, the needs of your physical being, and you do that for a purpose. And you do that because God decreed it. No wonder you feel, at first of all, liberated from your daily habits, second, weaned from the calls of your body, and third, the purpose of doing that is the highest and noblest value. It is the response to God's instructions. And this is the utmost in psychological uplifting. You are doing that for God. And as a matter of fact, one finds himself a different person in Ramadan. It's very difficult to be angered. Things that would cause you to uh, react uh, or to hit back uh, or to get angry wouldn't do that to you in Ramadan because you feel you are uh, in full composure. You feel that your reins are in your hands and not the reverse. So part of letting go in the fast is letting go of the negative aspects of your personality as well, which makes you feel, which brings you closer to God, and mm -hmm. especially when you're praying. Mm -hmm. So that too becomes part of the fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. As well as giving up mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the physical part of mm -hmm. it. Uh, but it is hoped that the lesson in self-restraint we learn during the day should not be wasted as soon as the sun sets. As a matter of fact, fasting was criticized by some even Muslim countries, by, by the authorities in some Muslim countries, that uh, it would lower the production rate, etc., etc. As a matter of fact, in Ramadan, we take our daily food, we are fully nourished. But the idea is that we take it at night to keep us during the day to meet our conditioned reflexes, our conditional habits, and to conquer them. And once you conquer your habits, you feel uplifted. You feel above your uh, clay, mm -hmm. the, the clay part of you. Uh, Dr. Hatud, uh, there are special times of the, of the month that you can pray, and one is the night of power that counts for many more nights of prayer than you actually than the actual night that you're praying mm -hmm. and it has very special significance could you sort of explain for us about the prayers that you do and how they count uh, more for you if well, you in Ramadan you more? have to uh, observe the usual regular prayers but of course at night after Aisha prayer there is the Qiyam prayer or the Taraweeh as they say uh, any number of rakahs would be acceptable, although traditionally uh, most people would do it as eight rakahs, others would do it as 21 rakahs. But suit yourself. The other night I was very tired and I had to pray four rakahs only. And uh, it would be good if you can recite the Quran, the whole Quran in Ramadan, and I know in some mosques in the Taraweeh prayers all over the month they would uh, recite uh, the full Mus'haf, the full Qur'an. During the last 10 days of Ramadan is hidden somewhere, somewhere, the Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. And there is a surah in the Qur'an about the night of power saying that it is better than a thousand months and that it was the night when the Qur'an was revealed. At the, beginning, at the beginning, and it says that the angels would come down. It, it is a very blessed night, but somehow God in his wisdom didn't say it, it didn't pinpoint it. <laughs> it is not that night in particular. But leaving it um, vague in the last uh, 10 days would be an incentive to Muslims to uh, observe even more prayer and more prayer to God and praising God and remembering him, etc. Which is the final act because it is the last 10 days. It is the acme of the whole procedure. 
and after that comes the Eid. The, uh, I've heard that during uh, the month of Ramadan, the gates of heaven are opened yes. and the gates of hell are closed. So that prayer becomes very it special. It is a hadith during this after time. the Prophet. When it is Ramadan, the gates of hell are closed and the gates of heaven are, are open. And so that whatever you ask for, whether it's positive or negative, gets granted. Um, I, I, I don't is that a myth? Uh, go as simplistic as that. Mm -hmm. But certainly you should feel nearer to God mm -hmm. and you should feel that these are um, blessed days by God and God himself encourages you to ask and to seek. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ask me and I give you, etc. Of course, I absolutely believe in God's promise. But it is more incentive to try and be nearer to God by your deeds and by your prayer and by your worship. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, what about the night of power, and are there myths around this night of power? Well, when I was a child, I almost believed in the folklore about the night of power. They used to tell us that on the night of power, if you keep watching the sky, there will be a big circle of light, and if you are lucky enough to uh, encounter it, then you just ask and you are given. Whatever you ask will be given. It is not in that literary sense, as a matter of fact, no circle of light appears. But that used to make us as children try to uh, stay the night awake. <laughs> but we were all the way beaten by sleep. So it's more symbolic. It is. It is symbolic. This is folklore, really. But the reality is that these are good days. They are rich days and blessed days. And. God tells us that if you are steadfast and perseverant and keeping a prayer, etc., we are so pure and so near to Him that when we ask, we'll be given. Mm, that's lovely. In Ramadan, one is a different person, really. And Ramadan um, influences even people who wouldn't normally say their prayers or worship, uh, are keen on worship in particular. But I've met so many friends in my home country who uh, pay no heed to religion at all. But when it is Ramadan, away with the drink, fasting, they observe it, prayer during Ramadan. It has such a command over them that they have to change their lives. And of course, it's a good sign because it is a seed of good. And if you just try and elaborate on it and build it up, as so many times uh, uh, I found, you go to the person at the time when he is most receptive and tell him, it is good that you are fasting Ramadan. I'm so happy you are fasting. But don't you think it is a breach of ethics when God tells you, I want you to fast and pray. And you tell, you tell him, I, I'll fast, but prayer, no. And so it's a time of vulnerability because right. you're at your weakest point because mm -hmm. you've denied yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's a time that in your vulnerable state, you reach out to God. Mm -hmm. and you're less arrogant and less impregnable. Yes. And you are very receptive. Your time heart is open. Of change and to be changed. That's right. Then, of course, people look uh, for the sighting of the moon. If the moon is sighted, that means the next day is the, is the day of Eid. And then uh, this is the festival day. That is the festival breaking, uh, festival of the completion of the month of fasting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people really look forward for that. It's like a graduation day. You have gone through the whole yes. uh, period of, uh, of work and uh, exercise and uh, this course that you have taken and now is the day of uh, of happiness then you are uh, and people gather together in the morning for prayer and greet each other mm -hmm. uh, gifts are exchanged people invite each other to their homes and exchange the greetings and all those festivities that go on and some in some places they go on for several days uh, but at least there is one day which is called Eid al-Fitr the feast of the breaking of the fast 
uh, are, are, is Ramadan a time that people can be uh, can hopefully be forgiven for their sins or uh, can make up prayers that they might have missed or things the like Prophet, that? The uh, Prophet, peace be upon him, said that uh, whosoever fasts during the month of Ramadan with the sincerity of the heart, he comes out from the month as if he is born today. It's a new birth has taken place. So this is a, it's a new person. And uh, also, one, all, one other thing that I wanted to emphasize, that during the month of Ramadan, people do a lot of charity. Some people pay their zakat during this mm -hmm, month. Mm -hmm. And there is also another zakat which is given either on the day of Eid, which is the festival day, before prayer, mm -hmm. or sometimes people give it even before that, which is called Sadaqatul Fitr. Uh, this is... Uh, what does that mean? That is a, cha a special charity mm -hmm. of the day of Eid. Mm -hmm. And this is given especially to the people who are poor and in, in need, so that they can participate in the festivities of mm -hmm. this day. And it is, uh, the minimum for that is about five dollars per person in your family. Mm -hmm. So those who can afford, they are supposed to pay, the head of the household supposed to pay on behalf of every member in the family at least this amount, which is five dollars per person. And that is called Sadaqatul Fitr, and that should be given really before prayer on this, on the Eid day, the day of feast. I always think that if fasting is important ten times under normal circumstances, I think under the circumstances in the West, it is important thousand times. Because really here, if we look to, to our society, we find that there are prevailing attitudes. All of them are in the direction of do whatever you want. Enjoy yourself to the maximum now regardless. And we really need to stop and say, no, I am a human being. I can have the desire to enjoy and say, no, I'll defer that for higher considerations. The age where fasting is mandatory is puberty. At puberty, it is right after the spurt of growth. The total amount of nutrition that a person takes on the fasting day is the same. It is the distribution, it is the timing, because we fast from pre-dawn to sunset. But after sunset, we, we eat and we drink. And a person who wants to live a healthy life, he can conduct himself in a way that he will take the same amount of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and, uh, and even calories. There are certain exemptions for, for the fasting that were spelled out clearly in the Quran, that if someone is sick, or finds very great difficulty in fasting, or a traveler on the road, he is allowed to break the fast, provided that he makes up for it on, under different circumstances. The argument comes, uh, I, I always uh, find it valid that uh, some people say, but this was when traveling was so difficult in the desert on camels, but now, in your um, um, air-conditioned jumbo jet, you can definitely find no hardship. Still, Islam is unchangeable, and it is a gift from God. It is not mandatory that you break your fast during, you, during the traveling. It is up to you. You can take it or you can leave it, and you still be allowed to take it or leave it wherever or whatever the traveling is, represents a hardship or not. Because during the travel, you break your routine. It is, there is that element of that. The system of the day is disrupted. And God, in his mercy, allowed us at these times that we are exempted and we can make for it later on. The whole idea of fasting is to enhance self-restraint. If we don't enhance the self-restraint quality of the human being that made him a human being, I think the fasting is, uh, is not working. So it's, the idea is not to abstain from food and drink. Of course, we are also ordered to abstain from intimate uh, marital relationship during the day. But there, is, there are very strong re recommendations to control your anger, to abstain from disputes and from useless arguments, to, to tame your temper, to control your your desire to keep so you fight the stinginess and you become a giver uh, generosity is is recommended during ramadan kindness 
work, as a matter of fact, because we have the desire to be lazy. All this comes as in totality. Uh, the idea is the Prophet, peace be upon him, said a very, very penetrating and revealing uh, uh, statement. He said, be aware that there are those people who fast and all what they gain is hunger and thirst. Uh, I think it is, um, it is very wise and very penetrating that here is someone who, who fasts, he keeps swearing, losing his temper, quarreling, fighting, lazy, he doesn't want to move. And what he gained, he became hungry and thirsty, but he did not elevate himself the way fasting is supposed to. <coughs> and so definitely it is not just abstinence from food and drink, it is a whole process of transcending and ascending uh, with the human being um, spiritually and in his way of his conduct and behavior. The Quran specifically said that you fast in Ramadan, during that month of Ramadan. This is not exclusive, but the, 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 the farida, the mandatory fasting, is that month of Ramadan, which is a lunar month, as you probably know, according to the Islamic calendar. Uh, so sometimes it comes in the summer, sometimes it, it rotates and comes in the winter and the spring. So the whole life may be covered one way or another with this element of self-restraint. Mm -hmm. As an act of politeness, it is God invited you to his table and said, after sunset, you eat, you enjoy yourself. We don't brag and say, no, I am a very strong believer. So even if you, God, allowed me to eat, I am not going to. This is not the way the sensitivity of a Muslim accepts things. If God said until sunset, it is until sunset. After sunset, we, we go and uh, we enjoy, of course, with moderation so that we don't destroy what we have been building up during the day of self-restraint, etc. And once the uh, sun is down, we jump on the food like uh, a revenge. We should not do that. A Muslim should be clean all the time. Uh, we take uh, showers and we, of course, we do the ablution for the uh, prayer. We gargle our mouth and we clean our teeth uh, using whatever uh, means that are available and are effective. In the early time, they used to use certain kind of, uh, of wood uh, plant that has good aroma. Uh, now uh, toothpaste will be fine. Uh, a Muslim is encouraged to, to, to be clean, to keep his mouth clean, and to, uh, to keep his clothes clean, and to, to be in his, a better human being as a whole. The philosophy is Islam, of Islam is that we are accountable according to our intentions. Uh, so if I intended, suppose I intend to do something good, and I couldn't for whatever reasons, still what counts is the intention. So in any action in Islam, be it the prayer, be it fasting, uh, be it uh, charity, be it zakat, be it hajj, my intention should be to do so and so. So if I am, let us say, I got busy, I got busy during the day, I ran to my office without taking my, my tea or without taking breakfast, I kept uh, getting busy in one thing after the other until night. I can't say, okay, God, count this as fasting. 